Welcome to our lecture online. Here it's where it's beginning to be really interesting when we're talking about the reduced mass, especially in context with the energy of the binary system. Now let's review the energy of a binary system. If the large mass is much, much greater than the small mass, then the total kinetic energy of the system is simply the kinetic energy of the small mass because essentially the large mass does not move and all of the kinetic energy motion is due to the small mass and so we can then calculate it to be one half mv squared. But what if that's not the case? What if the large mass is simply somewhat bigger than the small mass then the total kinetic energy must be the sum of the kinetic energy of the small mass plus the kinetic energy of the large mass, because the large mass will also be revolving around the barycenter. And so what we get then is we get the following equation. Notice that we use large m and large v for the mass and the velocity of the large mass, and also we use the large p for the momentum of the large mass, where the small m, small v, and small p belong to the small mass. So then when we add up the two kinetic energies, we get one-half large m large v squared plus one half m v squared. Now notice if we then convert that into momentum and mass, the momentum is mass times velocity, so m squared plus v, m squared times v squared will give us p squared, but since we only have one m, we end up with an m in the denominator. So here we can convert that to one half p squared over m plus one half p squared over m for the large and the small masses. And then we make a claim that the large p must equal the small p. Well, that may not be directly evident, but let's go over here. Realizing that the large velocity, the velocity of the large mass, is simply 2 pi large r over the period. And the velocity of the small mass is 2 pi small r over the period. Now, the period, of course, for both has to be the same because they're always on opposite ends of the barycenter. Then if we multiply both by the mass of the large and the mass of the small m here, then we get 2 pi r m over t, 2 pi r m over t. And then we can say that r times m for the large mass must equal r times m for the small mass. We've shown that in the previous video. And therefore we can claim that the momentum of the two objects must be the same. And so if that's the case, we, we can replace large p by small p. And now we have everything in terms of small p. Then we can factor out a one half, one half p squared. We end up with 1 over large m plus 1 over small m, which can be calculated to be this, which eventually comes out to be this. Now notice that is the inverse of the reduced mass, so we can then take 1 half p squared and divide it by the reduced mass because then we take the inverse of that in the denominator. So then essentially, the total kinetic energy becomes 1 half p squared divided by the reduced mass of the small mass, and noticing that p equals mv, that has not changed. Now, why is this so interesting? Well, let's come up here. Notice that the total kinetic energy is one half p squared over the reduced mass, which is one half m squared v squared over the reduced mass, which is one half mv squared times m over the reduced mass. Now, m is the mass of the small object, so notice that this quantity right here is equal to the kinetic energy of the small mass taking its mass and its velocity but that is now no longer the total kinetic energy this is only the kinetic energy of the small mass but the kinetic energy of the total system we must multiply it times the ratio of the mass of the small mass divided by the reduced mass and realizing that the reduced mass is always less than the small mass, this ratio will always be greater than 1. In other words, the total kinetic energy will always be greater than the kinetic energy of the small object multiplied times m over m sub r, which is always greater than 1. And so, if m sub r becomes smaller and smaller and smaller, this ratio becomes bigger and bigger and bigger, and more of the kinetic energy is then in the large object as opposed to in the small object. And of course, eventually, when the two objects are equal in size and m sub r is half of m, then you can see that the kinetic energy is equally divided between the two objects. You can see that the equation holds fast in the two limits, where let m sub r equal m, and where let m sub r equals 1 half m. And so that, I think, is extremely interesting. By using the reduced mass, which is easily 
to calculate. We can then find the total kinetic energy of the system by calculating the kinetic energy of the small object and then multiply times that ratio. I think that's quite interesting, quite useful, and another way of looking at the usefulness and the importance of the concept of the reduced mass. And that is how it's done. I don't know, do you think this is interesting? <laughs>